ultimately more harm than good can occur and frankly intentions don't matter when people are dying hey guys it's cat law welcome to my 18th episode today i'm going to be talking about global health which is a facet of public health and specifically an issue that may seem small but it is uh, still something that is harmful and of great concern to me and that is the issue of volunteerism and Christian mission trips in foreign countries. For my returning viewers, welcome back. I am grateful for all of you. And for anyone who, who's new, please make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications as I try to upload frequently, but I don't really follow a set schedule anymore and you won't want to miss a thing. I'm a public health communicator, which is a type of science communicator-ish that also discusses the social issues, philosophy, and applications of public health in addition to the medical science basis of healthcare. I am currently a full-time student who also has part-time jobs in a hospital and at a food bank based nonprofit. Yeah, I don't really sleep. I'm not a medical doctor, a public health official, or a public health expert. I hope to be all three of those one day, but right now I just like talking about this and I have an educational background in it, so I feel well informed enough to help educate others. So let's get into this. So first off, before even getting into the healthcare side of these religiously motivated mission trips and volunteerism in general, these programs are harmful. They take away jobs from the local economy they use unskilled labor to build up infrastructure like, oh, we're going to build a well, we're going to build a schoolhouse, whatever, library. It really isn't helpful. Additionally, sometimes mission trips will be to volunteer in orphanages and they end up interacting with children for like, what, a week or two out of the time. And that is not healthy for children who may be in unstable situations. Overall mission trips, volunteerism, they just take, objectify other people to elicit an emotional reaction and make someone feel better about themselves, even if they may have just done harm to this specific area that they were in. On to the healthcare side of this, there are so many disturbing instances of good intentions outweighing actual medical training and credentials. One of the most infamous situations like this is the story of Renee Bach, her charity serving his children, and the extreme harm she did to impoverished people in Uganda. Basically, as she was very much encouraged by her evangelical church and previous mission trips. In 2010, at 20 years old, with only a high school diploma for education and her only experience being previous mission trips, she decided to start up a charity that originally was to provide meals for impoverished people in this area of Uganda, but then it quickly devolved into her treating severely malnourished children who were supposedly stabilized. And then eventually people began to believe that she was a medical practitioner and she would provide health care to these children who were in very dire situations. Like while mal malnutrition was one of their biggest issues, the thing is this was generally malnutrition as caused by disease, especially infectious disease. It was things like babies with um, stage four HIV. It was uh, um, just various harmful situations. I want to say they're countless, but over the course of the five years that this charity functioned as a healthcare center, she treated 940 children and 105 of them died. Now, if she was sticking to what she originally was supposed to be doing, which was treating already stabilized children who were experiencing severe malnourishment and were just in the later stages of their treatment, this is an excessive mortality rate. But she was treating these children 
in the most acute stages of their diseases. So one of the first stages will be to hydrate them. And that will be through IV bags. It, but if your electrolyte balance isn't correct to when you're administering these IV bags, you could give the kids heart attacks effectively if the sodium and potassium levels went out of balance. That's really simplified. Like as an aside, like part this episode has been kind of hard for me to film because researching this whole story a lot deeper than I already knew is just really depressing. And if you want to join me in this, I'll be linking a couple links to different articles below and you can go down your own rabbit hole of this all. But also the fact is my future goal is to be a pediatric infectious disease specialist along with um, potentially researching um, malnutrition as a result of infectious disease. And if I already can just read these articles and be like, wow, she was doing so many things wrong and just harming kids with this hubris and this belief that, oh, well, I feel called by God to do this, therefore I can. It's just, it's crazy and it's depressing. At this point in time, there have been um, legal settlements uh, for dealing with the whole potentially misrepresenting herself as a doctor or any medical practitioner, along with the involuntary manslaughter and negligence that caused these children's deaths. But there's still other ongoing legal battles with this. Ultimately, the thing that we really need to take away from this is that this uh, woman was encouraged by evangelical mission trips to help poor impoverished children and didn't do it responsibly and ultimately harmed the health of a population. She harmed public health. When I speak to global health, it's because we're looking at public health abroad, public health across the globe, as in this situation most likely is not unique. Like, while this is the thing that's reported on, there are other situations of, uh, um, of missionaries overstepping the boundaries and harming people. So historically, mission connotes that uh, um, they are looking for converts and to proselytize and to bring people to whatever religion. But also, like, looking beyond this religious motivation in modern day, one of the driving factors of these kind of trips are white savior complexes. White savior complexes are inherently racist thought processes and racism is harmful to public health. Hopefully you could have like deduced that by now. The issues of racism in healthcare and the long enduring damaging effects of racism on population health deserve their own focus so i'm only really going to do an overview in this moment with white savior complexes uh, stereotypes of unending unsolvable poverty thrive and perpetuate this idea that people from abroad need to be brought in to save everyone cultural sensitivity and respect uh, of uh, these practices are minimized by volunteers who are brought in. This ultimately leads to miscommunications and ineffective health care and harm to people's health. Ultimately, more harm than good can occur, and frankly, intentions don't matter when people are dying. As I've been speaking about Christian missions, much of white savior type thinking can be connected back to religion and the uh, um, push to convert anyone and everyone. Religion driving these missions it can also alienate those truly in need of health care as they may have to uh, tolerate proselytization to receive any care. So far I've been focusing on unskilled mission trips but I would also like to give a bit of a nod to um, volunteer missions from secular organizations that have skilled workers uh, as they are quite different. Mainly here I'm focusing on Medicine Sans Frontiers, 
Sorry if my pronunciation sucks. I have not actually properly spoke French in years. Also known as Doctors Without Borders. Doctors Without Borders is far from perfect. They have done amazing things throughout the world, but there are still um, allegations and instances of racism and promoting white savior complexes. But they are bringing in appropriately trained volunteers and practitioners and employing and training local people to help support these healthcare centers even once the volunteers have left. To bring a community out of poverty, you need to be able to employ and assist the people within the community. The focus on education is key as self-sustainability is absolutely essential in lifting people out of poverty. This is true both at home and abroad. Overall, while giving support to underserved areas, impoverished areas globally is essential, it must be done while maintaining perspective and prioritizing the people and the culture that you are helping. Christian missionaries have harmed others with inappropriate behavior, to say the least, and overly bolstered confidence pushing them to play doctor and treat other lives as expendable. If you're doing something that could get you in legal trouble in the U.S., you shouldn't be doing it abroad. This is harmful to public health, global health as a whole. That's our show. Please make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, like, comment, share, check out my socials linked below. Also educate yourself and check out the sources I linked below. And yeah, until next time, stay safe, wear a mask, check your biases, get vaccinated if the vaccine is available in your area to you. And I'll see you later. Bye guys. You'd think that'd be common sense.